So what I would like to do today is talk about civic interaction design. Um, I have three chapters. The first one is, what is it? Um, why is the second chapter? Why should we talk about it? Why is it important to talk about civic interaction design? And then third, I would like to talk about how are we going to uh, approach that from our uh, research group. So let's begin. What is civic interaction design? And I think we've already given you two examples in the, in the clips that you showed, the projects for the city making and circulate. And both of them approach civic interaction design from a slightly different perspective. The first one, uh, the 40 city making, uh, there we are looking at uh, new media, digital media that are evolving, things like augmented reality, projection mapping, and we're looking how can we apply that in the domain of civics? How we can we use this new technology, figure out how they work to make traditional processes of participation uh, more interesting, more visual, more uh, uh, yeah, attracting maybe a broader audience by creating new instruments. So that's one thing that we do, applying interactive technologies to the domain of civics. Another thing is, and I think the circuit project is really uh, an example of that, um, is that we do not just design the technologies themselves, but we also organize a debate around the implementation of those technologies. Uh, what does it mean to actually start living in a research community and have a blockchain and have digital, pro uh, digital platforms organize the way that you live together and that you share your energy together? And I think what both projects um, have in common um, huh, is that what we're seeing or, or what we're doing is actually helping citizens to become part of shaping the future of their cities, right? Being part of the debate or shaping it themselves because they're starting up an energy community. And I think also both projects uh, in some way are, we can call them civic because they contribute to what we could call a public good or something that's of communal concern or maybe a societal mission. And the first example of 4D city making, it's about the democratic process. The second one, circulate, is about empowering citizens to become part of the energy uh, transition. And what is it that we do then? I think this definition from Gordon and Mugar from 2020, I think it really sums it up, right? makes it really concrete. As civic interaction designers, uh, what we do is we design tools, media, uh, uh, interaction, interactive formats uh, for people to interact with each other, uh, to form alliances around a the theme that they find important, uh, to generate shared interest, and to take care of matters of public concern. And um, I would say that's, of course, not something new. That's something that uh, has been part of society for, for a long time. And I think the work that we do is really much related to something that's also being called civil society, right? Civil society, and I've uh, shown you some examples here in this slide, are sort of the traditional forms that citizens are becoming active in society and try to shape uh, yeah, the, the, the society itself. And that can be through formal organizations like unions uh, fighting for workers' rights, or it can be through housing associations, for example, when they were founded more than 100 years ago. It was a civic initiative because they, they wanted to create affordable and inclusive houses for the working class. Um, it can also be initiated by the government, uh, by sort of formal participation procedures, or it can actually be something really informal. It's just citizens getting together, for example, in this uh, last picture on this slide. Uh, it's a food drive. Citizens getting together on the neighborhood level uh, uh, to organize uh, solidarity uh, with, 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 with other people. And um, I think with all these, again, with all these yeah, examples show, and I think that's sort of the core of, of civics. Uh, it's about citizens making citizens part of the process of shaping uh, society. But it can also be the other round, way around. It can also be about making sure that the way society is being shaped addresses the needs of citizens. Right? It's not doesn't mean civic society doesn't mean that citizens have to solve all the problems. If you look at the housing association, for example, it's not the workers who build the houses themselves. No, it's the invention of a new organizational form that takes care of the needs of a particular group in society. And I think that's really what civic interaction design is about. So 
I think you still could say, you know, what's so special or what's so interesting about it? I mean, in a way, you could say some interaction designers, they make an app for Uber, other make an app for a housing association or for an energy community or for an organization like Greenpeace. What is so special about it? And I think the reason that, that we find it really important to talk about civic interaction design as a discipline or as an emerging field, maybe in between all kinds of dis disciplines, is that it's not just a matter of applying technology to the domain of civics, but it's the domain of civics changing itself, right? Civics, or this organization of public life, as we also call it, is now taking place in what we call a network society, a society that is increasingly mediated through digital technologies, through digital platforms, all kinds of networks, and that shapes also what we call the social order, and that means that civics is now becoming something different. So we're not only designing civic tools, we also have to figure out actually what it is, civics, in this society. And um, I've illustrated this with, uh, with this diagram. I mean, you could say that uh, what we call civics, the involvement of citizens in the shaping of society, that's not something that stands on itself, right? It's always happening in a force field, a power field, with other institutional players, for example, the government uh, or the market, and they interact with each other. And I think what we're seeing now is that in all these domains, uh, amongst others due to the uh, to, to sort of the digital transition that we're, we're in, but not only that, we're seeing a lots of shifts happening. So if we look at the government, for example, for the last uh, 20, 25 years, we've seen a huge tendency for liberalization. So we're leaving more and more traditional tasks that the government would do, taking care of uh, public values, taking care of the world, of society. Okay, we're leaving that to the market. If we look to the market itself, I think one of the yeah, really important um, developments there is something that we've called platformization. I've written, uh, co-authored a book with Jose van Dijk and Thomas Poole about that, the platform society. And in that book, we describe how more and more sectors of society are yeah, becoming dominated by tech platforms, yeah, whether it's Amazon in shopping or whether it's Google uh, in, in all kinds of uh, Google education, for example, in, in, in education, um, whether it's Uber in transport. Uh, these platforms take on a new role in organizing various sectors of society. And they pretend that they're sort of neutral marketplaces, just connecting supply and demand, but they're not. Uh, they, in, in the book, we demonstrate that they're actually designed uh, around particular values. Uh, for instance, one of the things that they do really well is that they offer individualized services for consumers. Um, what they also do really well is uh, uh, creating a lot of profit for the shareholders. But those platforms, they do not really take public values into account that much. They say, that's not of our business. We're just marketplaces. And then... If we look the yellow bubble to society uh, itself, I think also there we see a really important shift happening um, that we could call networked individualization. So it means that the way that people organize themselves socially has really been shifting. And some have been calling this a shift from in, in, also in citizenship, from dutified citizenship to actualizing citizenship. And what these authors mean by that is dutified citizenship is that people uh, uh, yeah, are part of all kinds of organization because they feel it's their duty, right? They are part of a, of a union, for instance, because everybody else is. Or they subscribe to a local newspaper because yeah, that's what you do, right? When you grow up and when you start your own family. And we still see now that a lot of citizens are still interested in the world around them. They still want to participate, but they don't do that out of duty, but they do it more and more out of uh, sort of intrinsic motivation. Yeah? For example, the people starting an energy uh, community. And the digital transformation is giving all these groups also more and more tools to do so, the social networks, collaboration tools, tools to uh, campaign. And I think, and this is a very interesting development, I think sort of across the political spectrum, we see new kinds of social organizations popping up. 
right? On the on sort of the more conservative side, we see uh, identitarian movements using blogs and talk radio and social networks to express their concern for their, from their point of view, what's happening to the world. If we look at the more progressive side of the political spectrum, we see really lots of initiatives of people trying to organize things in the form of an urban commons, people organizing public spaces in new ways. And um, I think there is a huge promise there because in all those initiatives you see a lot of energy, a lot of uh, people that are very involved in society and want to contribute. But of course, there's also a huge risk, right? It could also risk, could also lead to fragmentation or uh, to polarization in society. So if we sort of redraw the picture, what we're seeing is probably could look something like this, right? We have uh, the, uh, the market, big, big tech, really playing a, an important role in our society. Um, to a certain extent, their commercial uh, services have become also our de facto civic infrastructure, right? Because all those, what I've called network publics, those small organizations, they're using those technologies of the big technological players. Um, and uh, yeah, the landscape of social movements, uh, there, is, there is a lot of them, but it's also a bit, uh, it's also a bit uh, fragmented. And I think what's even more important is that those forms of organizing these local movements through these networks, it's really new. And we're only just barely starting to understand how exactly that works. So civics, the, the, the relation between the different players is really changing. And um, yeah, how, how do we take care of the needs of citizens in this new landscape? And um, the answer is we, we don't really know because it's really shifting. And, and that's why it's so important to find out, especially uh, because uh, society is also faced with this, uh, a number of yeah, very important challenges, or you could say uh, societal missions, that we really should you know, collaborate uh, together to, to address. So I guess the proposition that we're making um, is that uh, if this is uh, uh, the society and the different actors that are there, then maybe civic interaction design uh, as a discipline can sort of help figure out um, yeah, what uh, civic interaction could mean in this, in this new uh, order, in this new social order. Uh, on the one hand, by designing new tools, by designing new methods, uh, like we did with the 4D city making project, but also um, by uh, not only applying the technologies, but also by using design to think what civics actually look like in this society, right? So it's not only uh, civic interaction design, it's also designing civic interaction in new ways. And what we found uh, is that um, around the topic of civic interaction, a lot of new roles are emerging. Uh, for instance, we see that on the one hand, we see a lot of citizens and collectives, um, and we see that it's often designers or architects or other professionals who play an important role in what we call coalitioning. So around a particular topic, say the energy transition, they really try to put together a coalition, a group of people to actually work on that particular topic. Uh, because it's no longer, there's no longer one clear organization that really can address that uh, topic in this, in, this, in this new social order. Um, something else that we see design uh, uh, really being good at is something we call imagining. So uh, designers use the, uh, their, their imaginative powers to also think through what the impact of technology on society can be by coming up with maybe alternatives, by critiquing some of the um, developments that we're seeing and bringing out a broader discussion. And um, a last important thing that we also see sort of happening in this new landscape, a new role also perhaps for design, is something we call institutioning. So it's making a relation between sort of all the citizens, their collectives, um, and governance, for instance, right? Because it's really nice if a civic interaction designer comes up with a new way in which citizens, for instance, can discuss something together, a topic like we did in the 4D city making project, but of course, that's only helpful if somebody is listening, right? So it's not just a matter of organizing citizens, it's also organizing the link with 
uh, governmental parties. The same we see in projects that we're doing, like uh, the circulate project. Uh, we see a lot of interesting innovation and in initiatives emerging from these energy communities. But sometimes they have uh, difficulty in realizing uh, their objectives because, for instance, there are uh, some old laws that are still prohibiting particular applications. Yeah, so design is not this designing that platform for that community. It's bringing together that coalition in the first place of architects, of tech developers, of residents. It's imagining, you know, what could it look like? Um, and it's also institutioning in the sense of interacting with the government to make sure that those things can actually happening. And um, of course, you know, if, if you look at this picture, that's, that's a really huge challenge, right? It's a really big topic to rethink civic interaction in the network society. And the good thing is that we're not doing that alone. Yeah? I think we're part of an international movement uh, of research centers, but also civic initiatives around the world that are springing up and they're using slightly different terms sometimes, such as public design or um, uh, careful design, but they're all about the same thing. They're all addressing this question, uh, how can we make sure that in this emerging network society, the needs of citizens are taken care of and how citizens can sort of become part of shaping uh, the world around them. And I think we're here also in a really good position, and I have to give a nod to my predecessor, uh, Ben Schouten, who founded this lectorate uh, in 2013, because already uh, in his inaugural address, uh, about seven or eight years, he already in introduced the term civic interaction design as one of the objectives of the lectorate. So I think a lot of what we're doing today is really building up uh, on uh, the work that he laid out. And uh, yeah, I want to say thank you for that as well to Ben. Um, one side note, though, because if you look at this, uh, um, I think it's a little bold, right? Sort of to put design so squarely in the middle of everything as if design can save every problem in the world. Uh, and, um, and that's, of course, not the case, right? I think we have to realize that a lot of the problems are very much political problems. Like, we cannot solve the energy transition, we cannot solve structural inequalities just with a, a pile of post-it notes, right? We really need uh, the government to be part of that, we need the market to be part of that, and we need citizens and collectives to be part of that. So, you know, I think our role is more like this, right? We're in the background and we're adding the qualities of design to this yeah, larger process of uh, yeah, shaping society. So that brings me to the third and last chapter. How are we going to do that? How do we think what we can contribute um, yeah, with, uh, with design to uh, organizing citizens, uh, network publics around societal challenges? Well, we're going to do that by uh, what we call research through design. And that's not a term we made up ourselves, of course. But it's an approach that uses design as a research method. So we're going to design interventions in society like we did at uh, the Schoenschip community, like we did uh, at Arkham, uh, on the one hand to test out what kind of new tools can be that, that people can use to change, to change their world, to change their surroundings, to be part of the shaping of the world. But we're also doing that to better understand what is, uh, what is happening, uh, how uh, the world is un unfolding around us. And this is a moment, I think, is a good moment to introduce the team uh, because um, the research group of civic interaction design, it's not just me, my, my role is, is actually quite modest. It's really this great group of people that together uh, pick up uh, a number of those uh, yeah, issues that are brought in by partners in society. So here they are. Uh, we have Miriam, we have Ben, we have Anders, we have Gabriele, we have Wouter, Dolinde, Marije, Morgana, Pamela, Tamara, Wouter, Katie, Julia, Angela, and Carol. And uh, we also have two new members that have only recently started, and we don't even have their picture yet so recently. So Boudewijn and Sky, also welcome to the group of civic interaction design. So it's these people together with our colleagues from education, uh, the learning communities that we also have in our faculty, um, 
Uh, and together with, and this is really important, I think Geleen already mentioned that, uh, is that in all of our projects, research projects, we work with all kinds of uh, organizations, companies, uh, local governments uh, uh, who are actually working on these themes um, as professionals. And we're very glad, and this is just uh, 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 yeah, a, a brief overview, there's many more, but I couldn't fit everybody uh, in, in one slide. Uh, but this is to give you sort of an idea of the variety of people that we're working with. And for us, it's very important because these are the people that are actually shaping uh, uh, society. These are the people that introducing those new technologies, new ways of collaborating, new ways of design uh, in society. Uh, and for us, it's really great to be able to work with them to figure out uh, how we can give shape to civic life in a network society. And together, we do that in uh, three types of research. Um, the first is form and experiment. The second is context and transformation. And the third we've called power, possibilities, and imaginaries. And I'll briefly discuss them and show some of the research projects that we're doing in that field. So form and experiment is the research uh, approach uh, in which we uh, take a look at new technologies as they unfold. We try to understand what are these new technologies? How can we use them in the context of civics? Uh, I've already given you this example, but we do um, a, a lot more. For instance, Miriam Vosmeer has working uh, for a long time already in various projects on virtual reality. And she tries to, uh, again, with partners, with other researchers, tries to understand of how does that medium work? How can we tell a story in it? How do people experience it? And then once we understand that, then we can apply it in the context of, of civics. Right, then we can sort of design civic or, or virtual realities, for instance, in the context of a museum or a festival that can invite people to reflect on the theme of, of diversity. And we have people working in different uh, technical uh, disciplines. So Anders and Karel and our former colleague Rima van Rosen, um, they have a background in game design. We also work a lot with uh, our colleagues from the Lecteraat Urban Spatial Transformation at the Faculty of Technology, Frank Surenbroek, and together in this project with uh, Julia and Boudewijn, we're exploring design of public spaces uh, in times of COVID, uh, but we also have been looking at the design of interactive public spaces. So how can we apply digital media technologies, in this case at the Arena Boulevard in Amsterdam, to make uh, public spaces more interesting and more lively. And I think what all these projects do is uh, coming from uh, yeah, design disciplines or interactive design disciplines like HCI or game design, urban interaction design, digital design, um, in the context of civics, try to understand yeah, what, 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 what is this? What is this? Um, what is this particular medium? How can we design with it? What is the grammar, the language of it? Can we come up with design guidelines? Investigating these new technologies in the context of civics to help other designers uh, make better, more interesting products. The second research that, part, uh, that we're doing, or approach, um, we call context and transformation. And now we're moving uh, from sort of uh, yeah, experimenting with the technology itself we are moving it into an actual uh, uh, space. Um, I think the, the project of Schoonschip and the, the, the circular project is an example of that. Another project that we did, uh, amongst others, with Gabriele Ferry, uh, Karel Millenaar, Ben Schouten, and colleagues from other universities, such as Michiel, Tara, Christina, and Fraukje, um, and One Architecture, uh, as an architectural firm, uh, we really try to understand, okay, what does it mean um, to um, develop a neighborhood um, as a coalition of bottom-up groups? So um, there was an architectural firm, One Architecture. It was involved in the redevelopment of Buikstarteham, which is a former industrial area in the northern part of Amsterdam. And um, they had uh, aligned themselves with lots of other local partners, other architectural firms, technological companies, uh, future residents. And they said, how can we collaboratively develop this area uh, according to the logic of the circular economy? Because we find that is a very important theme. 
And what we did with them is on the one hand, we designed uh, a number of tools, workshop formats, uh, online tools for knowledge sharing, for instance, uh, between them, uh, tools uh, for them to share alliances, have discussions with each other. But we also looked at the process itself, of design itself. Uh, and one of the things we found, this is one of the first pro uh, projects where we found the importance of what I've called institutioning before. Because in order to move on with our plans for these groups, it was really important to have the government on board and to prove to the local government that what they were doing was actually contributing to public values, right? So that became sort of a new task for the designers because they didn't wait for the government to give them assignment. They come up with their own assignment, but for them it was really important to prove how that was actually beneficial for society so uh, they could work with the government in an interesting way. So what we're doing in this research strand is, it's not so much the design of the technological projects themselves, it's more the things around it, right? It's talking about the values that we find important with the, uh, the future users of those technologies, with the future communities. It's involving them in the design of the project. So here we draw upon much more from disciplines as participatory design, situated design, value-sensitive design, yeah. And what we do, what we produce here, yeah, is yeah, theories, ideas, but are practical guidelines and toolkits of how you can do this process of institutioning, yeah, how you can organize those coalitions. Last one, um, and we're almost at the end now, is uh, a last research trend is power, possibilities, and imaginaries. And here we're drawing upon the power of design um, yeah, it's imaginative power. I think design is also really good in uh, yeah, showing us future visions of the world and uh, either worlds that we would really like or maybe also dystopian versions uh, of the world that we don't really like. And we can use those to think about uh, yeah, the role of technology in society and uh, bring those more speculative uh, projects into the public debate or in the professional debate. So here's one example of a project that we did. Uh, we did a series of workshops, for instance, together with our colleagues from Northumbria University um, uh, to imagine what the future of the blockchain could look like in the civic domain. And uh, that spurred a debate, it spurred a number of articles also in professional uh, magazines. Uh, so in that way, we tried to contribute to the discussion about the impact of these technologies from a perspective of civic values. Um, and so here we're drawing upon the logic and the, the, the disciplines of speculative design or design for debate. Uh, and what we bring in is imaginaries, alternative futures, criticisms and concepts. So I'm gonna round off. Um, and I think if you, you know, count up all those examples that I've given to you, those three different research strands, which of course do not completely stand by themselves, uh, they're often intermingled in our research project. I think what you will see, and you already see that now, but I hope so in, in five years from now, uh, you will see that we will have developed a portfolio of really a lot of different projects. And some projects will be about sort of one technology and maybe one societal theme. Another will be uh, about another technology and another societal theme. And um, it, it, there will be, a, yeah, quite a broad variety uh, because I don't think we want to specialize at this moment into only one technology or only one theme. Because I think, and that's my hope of doing all these different projects with all these different partners is that if you take them together, uh, at the end, uh, uh, they all contribute to, I think, this question, which is, yeah, I think at the heart of the electorate. Uh, and it is how can citizens, institutions, and companies collaboratively shape society to address the needs of citizens, a matter of public concern, and contribute to societal missions, right? I think that's the main question that's driving us forward, and that's, you know, how we, yeah, I want to also contribute um, to the professional field. And if you read that, uh, I hope you are, and, and when you listen to this, I hope you also hear uh, an open invitation in this. Because in many of those projects, what we can bring in from the electorate is the perspective of design, the perspective of interaction design. Uh, but if we are going to work together 
and collaborate on a theme like the energy transition, for example. I think it's really important for us to work together, as we already do, uh, with companies, research groups, uh, governments uh, that bring in technological expertise or more psychological expertise. Uh, and that's really my wish for the future, that we work together on these societal themes where we can bring in the perspective of civic interaction design. So that was it. Uh, thank you for listening. And, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope I was able to inspire you to reach out to us and join us in, in one of our coalitions. And before I give the word back, I just wanted to take one more minute to say a word of thanks. Um, and um, there's lots of people to thank, and I can't mention them all here, um, but just a brief overview of people that I would really like to thank. Um, of course, to start, uh, the rector and the dean for the trust they've put in me um, for this wonderful position. I'd like to thank my predecessor, Ben Schouten, I already said, I really paved the way for what we're doing in the electorate today. Uh, I'd like to thank him for all the inspiring conversations we had on this topic. Um, I'd like to thank Gabriele Ferry as uh, the head of program of the Master Digital Design and also one of the researchers in our group. And um, like um, Mahutin has said, my background is in the humanities um, and it was really him and Ben together who brought me into this, uh, yeah, into, into the bringing in sort of the design aspect in that. So thanks for all the conversations we had there. Um, thank you all the people in the research group. Um, we haven't seen each other for a year almost, and it's really strange to talk to you uh, through a screen like this. I miss you, and I really hope we can you know, get to back together really uh, soon again. Um, thanks also to the wonderful people in education collaborating with us. Thanks to our partners in society. Thanks to the partners in other research institutes. Um, and of course, finally, I would like to thank my friends, my parents, my family, uh, Anna, Kees, Camille, thank you all so much for everything.